Welcome to the Butterfly Effect brought to you by Mouse Adams. I'm Chris Horner and this is stage four of the Tour de France 2021. It starts off with a protest. Riders, lots of crashes yesterday, small narrow roads, and they weren't happy when the commissaires wouldn't let them extend the crash zone on yesterday's. They wanted to go five or 10 kilometers out to take away the GC guys out of the race and make it a little bit safer into the yesterday's finish. That didn't happen. We saw a lot of crashes on yesterday's stage. It was an epic battle. Stage one was epic, stage two, and yesterday stage three was epic. Today, all of the tension and the stress that the riders have been feeling has gotten a little bit too much, and so they're gonna have a protest at the start line. They're just gonna hold off for a couple minutes, and then they're gonna roll out for the next 10, 15 kilometers until a two-man breakaway, Parashon from Kofidis, and Brent Van Moore from Lotto, those two riders get away. Wanna point one something, wanna point one little thing out about Lotto. When that Brent Van Moore got away, it's his teammate back there that's opening up the gap. And so a lot of times people ask how much teamwork helps. These little things is why you have teammates, and this is what makes teamwork so fantastic and a great experience within the team, spiritual wise and just energy wise. And with the crash and, of course, the departure of Caleb Ewan from Lotto yesterday, they're on a mission to show they still got spirit in the Lotto team. So they're working together as a team. When Brent Van Moore gets away with Parashon, it's his teammate back there that's opening up the gap and allowing that to happen. There's a little more teamwork to happen at the end. Now those guys will get out, those two riders will get away, and they'll get no more than three minutes as the teams behind are chasing and keeping everything on a tight leash. With 15 kilometers to go, Brent Van Moore attacks Parashon and starts going away solo on the stage. Now I'm at NBC, like you folks know, and at that point in time when I saw him jump away, the gap is just about 40 seconds, and we're talking 14, 13 kilometers to go. I thought this is a great time. I'll go to the bathroom, I'll come back in, watch how the tactics play out for the sprint, because certainly the stage is coming down to a field sprint, right? But that's not gonna be the case. I come back from the bathroom run, and all of a sudden they want me up on the desk. Now a few more minutes have wasted. I'm on the desk, they flip the TV on, and they start talking about Brent Van Moore's chances of winning the stage. Why is he going off solo? I'm just talking about, well, hey, he's gonna get away, of course. He's got team sponsors, he's gonna get some TV time, but no, he can't stay out there to the finish. Christian Vanderfield throws in the wild card there and he says he's going to make it to the finish. When Christian Vanderfield says that, I look over at the clock. Remember, I told you, I walked away when he was attacking at 40 seconds and now I come back and I look at the clock and it's about 110. He's got a sizable gap and instead of it being 14 kilometers to go now, now we're talking about eight kilometers to go by the time I jump off the desk and get a real chance at looking at the time gap and I see he's got minute and 10. Wow, we got an exciting finish. I'm thinking, yeah, he's still gonna get caught, but we got an exciting finish now. Behind though, the teams aren't getting that organized. And again, the lotto teamwork is putting on a display back there. Whichever team is on the front chasing, they got two lotto guys behind those guys disrupting the chase and none of the other teams, especially DSM, they're near the front, but they're still staying behind the lotto guys and they're not actually getting up there starting to help with the Dakuna quick step guys that are up there chasing. And so with DSM holding back and with just a couple other teams up there chasing randomly and the lotto teamwork that's really helping Brent Van Moore stay off, all of a sudden it's starting to look realistic like Brent Van Moore can make it to the finish where everybody's getting excited in the studio, even the camera guys who don't watch cycling, certainly never spend much time watching bike racing at home, but they've been watching a lot lately today. And so all of a sudden everyone's excited in the NBC studios and we're starting to cheer for Brent Van Moore to make it to the line. With 1.3 kilometers to go, Julian Alaphilippe jumps on the front. We'll see him look over, he comes up to the front, he looks over like that to get his teammates on. They latch on and Julian Alaphilippe just starts sprinting. With one kilometer to go, Brent Van Moore's up the road and he's got a legitimate chance. We're talking about a 15 second or so gap, but the field is just 
have him in sight. But you gotta remember, this kid is strong. He already won the opening stage at Dauphiné earlier in the season, and he won it solo and held off the whole group. And now here at the Tour de France, after Caleb Ewan crashed out, he's doing a fantastic job of holding everyone off to the line, and we're all cheering for him in the studio. Come down with 500 meters to go. Brent Van Moore looks back over his shoulders, and there it is. Alpacine Phoenix got him in the crosshairs, and they are going hard. Tim Merlier, yesterday's winner, is now on the front for Jasper Philipson, who led him out yesterday. Now yesterday's winner is leading out his teammate, and he's throwing everything he can. Jasper Philipson takes over with about 250 meters to go and starts to pass Brent Van Moore at about 200 meters to go. And then out of the blue, it's Mark Cavendish, and Cavendish is on form. I talked about him on Beyond the Coverage about winning a stage in this year's Tour de France, and he's in the picture and going for the win at 200 meters. Philipson passes Brent Van Moore, and Cav is just behind, threading the needle as he's passing be between Case Bowles, the DSM sprinter, and Brent Van Moore, the lotto rider, coming back. And Cav threads the needle there and does not connect with either of them but loses a little bit of pedal stroke as he has to back off to Philipson, who's just getting a little bit of gap. Cav accelerates again, threads the needle between Case Bulls, the DSM rider, and Brent Van Moore, and now he's in a drag race with Philipson going for a win at the Tour de France on stage four. He pulls up even with him with 75 meters to go and then pulls away for a win at the Tour de France. Guys, we were going ecstatic at the NBC, NBC studios and just could not believe the emotions. We thought Brent Van Moore was going to win. Then we got a little depressed for a split second until Cab just threaded the needles, not once, but two times. And then a drag race with Jasper Philipson until all of a sudden accelerated and wins by a bike length on stage four. Cannot believe it. Cav, 30 Tour de France stage wins in the book already, and now he's added another one. 31 stage wins at home right now. Eddie Merckx, you better be getting worried because Cav is on form. During Beyond the Coverage, when I broke down the Kunick Quick Step, I thought Cav could win a stage, but honestly, I'll tell you flat out. Yes, could he win a stage, but I thought he would need some tactics, a little bit of patience, a lot of patience, and a little bit of luck with maybe some sprinters getting held up somewhere and then him threading the needle and finding a way out and then possibly winning a stage. Now, when I watched him win today, the first thing I did after he crossed the line, I turned around behind my shoulder and I said, Paul, we better start talking about him possibly evening up evening up the record of Tour de France stage wins with the legendary Eddie Merckx because he only needs three more and he just won today by blowing everyone off his wheel and winning by a bike length on an uphill drag with having to thread the needle not once but twice and when he was coming by Brent Van Moore, the lotto rider, as he's dropping back like a rock, he's got case balls there, and that needle is tight, and he had to back off on the pedal stroke a little bit in order not to run into Philipson, and then get back on the pedal again, hope that case balls is an honest sprinter and holds his line, which he does. Case Bowles was amazing to hold his line there. And then Cav accelerates and goes past Jasper Philipson for the stage win. Behind Buhani, who's following his wheel the whole time, gets second on the stage. Phillips in third, fourth, Michael Matthews, and fifth, Peter Sagan. Now this is, now this is crazy, right? Cav wins the stage. Peter Sagan is in the picture. Many people have written off Cav as winning a stage. Peter Sagan has ever been able to be up there and competing with these guys for a stage win. And instead, we flipped the clock back 10 years. Cav's winning. Peter Sagan is in the picture. Cav is in the green jersey at the Tour de France. What an exciting finish to today's stage. It started off dull, but it just finished with fireworks all the way to the line. Now, tomorrow's stage time trial, keep in mind, it's an important stage. Jumbo Visma certainly are going to try to win the stage and take the yellow jersey with Wout Van Aert, Matthew Vanderpool, the Albacene Phoenix 
race leader at this year's Tour de France is going to try to hold on during the time trial. And Julian Alaphilippe, the Kuna Quickstep, who's already won a stage earlier in the Tour de France, we're talking stage one, and then a stage today with Mark Cavendish and the green jersey. So right now, the Kuna Quickstep, they have the green jersey plus two stage wins and have already had yellow. And Alaphilippe, sitting second on general classification, is certainly going to try to steal that yellow back after tomorrow's Time trial stage win finishes. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys real soon on the next Butterfly Effect.